Hey guys, welcome back to Games Mods. Here we have the uh, MK4 again, uh, but now we're gonna disassemble it. So I've already done that pretty much. Um, you know, I just undid this screw and this screw to take off the stock, um, pulled the spring out, of course, and then um, to take the pump off, all you have to do is unscrew, what is it, six screws? One, two, three, four, five, six. Comes off in two halves. And it looks like this is Picatinny rail, so um, I will be putting probably, I have a I have a grip in mind, we'll see if it works. If not, I'll probably just put a worker one on it, but I want to see what we got. Um, after you undo those, you know, those come off, um, you know, the uh, supercharged muzzle, you just twist off. Um, the next part that you're going to do is to take off the front end here. And to take this off, you need to unscrew two screws here as well as on the other side, two screws on that side, and then once you do that, it just slides off uh, the front there. So after you get that done, you then have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 19-ish, 19 20-ish uh, screws to take off initially. And once you get the ones off the grip, the grip actually comes off and then you have uh, one more down here. And the grip does pop off into two halves, which is very nice. That is very convenient. So I'm just gonna put that to the side, up there. And then once you get all that done, you can open it up. And if the inside of this looks vaguely familiar, I think they basically copied what a Swift is inside. I've never opened up my Swift, but I assume it's basically uh, the same thing. So you have a very large plunger, plunger tube, which is nice. It's not that big, like a uh, uh, circumference size, but um, it's, uh, it's long. So that's a good thing. Um, the safety comes out on this side, oddly enough. Um, I did have to wiggle it free. This spring came out for the trigger, but if that pops up, you can just put it back in place like I did. Um, but yeah, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be, um, a, um, replacing the, uh, plunger rod and, uh, giving it a little bit thicker O-ring to get a better seal on it. Um, putting a, uh, Swift 1.6 spring into it. Maybe replacing the barrel. Um, we'll see if there's a difference if I really need to. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's it's a pretty simple mod, I believe. So, first things first is, um, I got this Delrin uh, plunger rod from uh, Tinker Shot, as well as these O-rings to go with it. And I believe we just need to get into this part. So, let's see, what's the easiest way to do this? I'm gonna take the catch out real quick, if I can. Let me not. Let me take the trigger out real quick. That's just one piece. Let me put that right there. So you got your bar there, priming bar. Not really sure what this is. Because down here is all the uh, mechanics of it. Um, <laughs> well, let's just start in doing stuff.
All right. Let's see, is this loose enough to come out? Hopefully, hopefully here. There we go. So very nice. So that just wiggles out the <coughs> the stock uh, metal one is pretty big as is. It is very lubed up in there, like a lot, which is nice. Um, well, I'll show you the difference between the stock one and the Delrin one. There you go. It's a smidge longer, but I believe you can actually, um, this will actually go further back into the stock so you get more compression. So very nice. We are gonna take this plunger uh, padding off and put it onto this guy. Well, let's, I might as well do that now. Um, let's see here, Ooh, very slippery. Yeah, man. There we go. This part may be a little bit difficult because you're trying to wedge it onto the uh, center post here. All right, guys, so I got that on. Uh, very difficult. <laughs> so basically what you want to do is you want to push in on one side and using a small flathead, kind of work your way around the inner tube so it you know, it, it envelopes around uh, that center post there just enough to where it's uh, sitting down. And I noticed when I was pushing it in, the um, it was very difficult because this part kept popping out. So you almost have to push in a little bit more and then push in with this side and it should just pop into place. But uh, it does take a little bit of uh, work and finesse. So be wary of that. Um, now we're gonna put the O-ring on. I'm gonna put on this green one because it looks like it might have a better seal. Maybe I'll use both. Actually, I wonder if I can use the ones from there. Let's see here. I think for the most part, the reason that it is $180, probably mostly for this part right here, because um, it is metal, it's machine made. And there's no really taking it apart. So it is one piece. It's better to have it moddable because if you do have a problem, you can always take it uh, back down. I'm actually going to put both of those on there just to get a better seal. There we go. Cool. Uh, okay, now let's see. The next part is. Oh. That won't work with that one. No, let me take the extra one off. There we go. Okay. Um, well, I'll use the O-ring that, uh, Tinker gave me it's 
actually save these ones for something else. See, it's already starting to come out, or it's trying to. There we go. That thing's a little fidgety in there. I don't, I don't like that piece. <laughs> um, and then there's a red one in here. I can get at it. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. This red one in here, we're actually going to put onto this piece. So I need to get this out if I can. Is that, I'm trying to see how that's put together. Is this all one piece? Well, that's just, this is rubber. Oh. This all just come out. Oh, there we go. Okay. So I don't really need to take it apart. I just need to get this o ring off and put that o ring on. There we go. Cool. And we're gonna put that right back into place. Put this back here where it was. Find that groove there. There we go. Okay. Okay, and then I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, I think we just put it back together now. Um, yeah, right? We just put it back together. Um, Tube's gonna go right back into here, like so. I'm gonna tuck that plunger whoop, as it goes flying through. Put that back on there. Sneak this right back onto there. All right, guys, so I got everything kind of back together. Um, so I did want to note one thing uh, before you put the trigger in, of course. Um, this piece came out, and I want to make sure that I tell you guys how to put it back in. So it's kind of shaped weird. It's kind of shaped like, if you look at this way, it's kind of shaped like a J uh, sideways. And on this side, it has another little piece, but it's also kind of slanted if you keep turning it, right? Well, that slant is going to go along this. So you're gonna hold this down, put it in like that. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the J hook is around this uh, rubber or silicone part. And you should just be able to fit it just like that. So if you get a little confused, just put it in like that. Uh, with the plunger tube, I had to pull up the catch almost totally out just to fit it back in there, but it's on there now. Fits fine. Um, now the fun part we're going to put a new barrel um, even though you don't really need it to uh, I, I ordered the barrel and the spring from out of darts the spring is mostly what you need for it to be higher power um, but i'm going to put a long barrel on it just because um, then i could put a scar or a b car on the end of it um, so that should be fun um now I, let's see i have the package here from out of darts with the spring and the barrel in it which i have yet to open so we will see what it looks like i'm not exactly sure if i need to i'm gonna guess i have to loosen this maybe 
I don't think that's a loose fitting barrel, is it? Something's tight on it, but it's hard to determine what. These two are just holding this piece down. So, maybe this end piece, we'll find out. There we go. So here's the barrel. So it's a little bit longer. Um, so you can see there, there's the chamfered side uh, right there. So got that little lip, so that's gonna go in like so. And then we have the big old spring, of course, and this guy. So, let's see how we place the barrel. That part goes in. Maybe I will undo these two screws just so I have more freedom with it. Not gonna lose them though, because that'd be bad. Um, now he did give me some replacement O-rings uh, for here. For now, I think I'm just gonna leave that one on just to keep these intact. I'm actually gonna put the ones off of this on back into this bag here just because I can have it all together. Okay, now that we have this part loose, let's see here. How do I get that barrel out? I wonder if I have to undo those two, just because. There we go. Okay, so you can actually see where that locks in with the uh, top priming bar there, so that's pretty cool. And hopefully, I should, ooh, that is in there. How well is that in there? That's the real question. Oh, there we go. So you just twist that off. I'm hoping the same with this. <laughs> yep, there we go, cool. So there's the stock barrel off. Leave that right there. Chamfer side is gonna go into that end. It is a really good friction fit though, so I will give it that, so that's a positive thing. Um, Now, we will have to dremel this piece out a little bit so this can go all the way through, which is fine. Okay guys, so I decided um, not to dremel out uh, the front piece only because um, I, this piece you actually need to use with the uh, super was it supercharged muzzle that came with it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna leave this piece out and just keep the long barrel in there. I've already secured it with these two screws that hold it and then uh, the priming bar actually holds it in place pretty well too. And then we'll have this piece around the front um, for looks. And if I really want to, um, you know, I, I might put some on the end of it. Um, I'll see if it works like that. See if it works okay. If it doesn't, um, then yeah, I'll have to go in there and uh, dremel this out to the uh, same size as the barrel here, which is the same size as this, but you know, it stops right there. So it's about, oh, I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch all the way around. So, you know, it is doable. Do I have to do it? I don't know yet. Um, 
we may look into that a little bit later. But for now, um, I'm going to put this side back on because we have everything back in place internally. Um, yeah. So I will put, I will screw this all back together and then um, we'll put in the spring and uh, uh, quote unquote finish it up and then we'll test and see what we get. All right guys, so I got the blaster pretty much together. Um, don't have this guy on here. You got of course the grip. So I got the barrel in there. It wiggles a little bit, you know, with this, it would be secure in there um, if I carved it out. But for testing purposes, I'm gonna leave it as is for now. Um, we might have to Dremelin put this piece in afterwards, but I wanted to test some theories. So now we're going to take our 1.6 spring that's usually used for the Swift. There we go. And we'll actually compare it to the higher spring that comes with the blaster. This is the 200 ish FPS blast or FPS spring. So it's about the same, but the compression um, is very different. This one's a lot tougher. Um, not by much, but enough. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this in like so. Make sure it is around our new plunger rod, which I cannot see. There it is. Put that all the way back as far as it'll go, which is about there. And then we will take our end pieces. Now, when this went in originally with the regular spring or whatever, it would go in like this, right? Uh, this way into the stock, and then your spring would uh, actually face onto this. Um, what you're actually gonna do now is you're actually gonna take this and flip it around like that and put it in backwards. And this is actually gonna give you, a, 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 it's gonna give you a little bit of a spring spacer. So you will actually have a little bit more FPS going into the blaster, which is always a good thing. And then, let me take these screws out real quick, because they will get in the way of me putting this back on, like so. You can push the uh, the orange piece all the way back if you want. I did a little bit just to get the spring in there and then the spring will push the rest of it back in like so. There it goes. And there we go, it's in there. I'm gonna put the two screws back in to secure it. You don't want that flying off. That would be bad. There we go, and you're pretty much done. Um, more stuff falls. Um, so now, I believe, well, if we really want to, I know there's a detent in there. Okay, we'll, we'll leave this off. Um, I'm gonna put a B car on the end just to see how it feels. I'm gonna put a different grip on it. I'm actually gonna put the top priming slide grip from the Unicorn on the bottom because I like pumps more than I like uh, uh, four grips, but that's my style. I also wanted to see and make sure that this takes regular Talon mags. Um, so I'm gonna go grab some of those and uh, we'll test and see. All right guys, so I got the, uh, the grip from the Unicorn, the top grip, I guess. Uh, I wanna put this on here. Uh, let's see here. It should just slide on. I don't even think that's gonna be too big. Feels nice on there though. Like, like it's very snug on there. 
like I um, oh, guess not. <laughs> Leave those nuts out there for. Hmm. I think it's gonna be too big. Yeah. Um. Wheel. I'll just put a regular worker uh, worker grip on it in a second here. All right, guys, I put the angled worker uh, grip on there, and it, it's fine. Um, the other thing I want to put on is this red uh, B car on there. Thought that looked pretty good with all the red. There we go. So now it really looks like a sniper. <laughs> um, and I think that's oh, I was gonna let me hold it, pull this out just for a second. I wanted to test uh, the different mags in this. So we know that the ones that came with work of course. Um, let's see, I want to try. Make sure that the 10 works. There we go, you kind of have to ram the mags up in there, but it's in there and that works fine. Next up, we're going to try our uh, 15 regular mag. That's in there. Um, we're going to try the one that came with the uh, unicorn. Yep, that works fine. 18 curved. Yep, works fine. Tachi. Works fine. And then the Coda. Yeah, works fine. It's a little loose, but you know it is what it is. Um, but yeah, they all work, uh, they work great. Actually, now it has a really good seal on it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and load up a mag with um, a couple of the darts that it came with, and uh, what's it? <coughs> sorry, I'll load up a mag, uh, probably the one that it came with, with a couple of darts that it came with, and uh, we'll see what kind of uh, FPS uh, um, ranges we get out of it now that we've upgraded the uh, spring and the barrel. Um, so yeah, see you guys in a second. Alright guys, here we are at the door with the uh, <laughs> very sniper-esque looking um, Dart Zone Pro Mark 4.0 now uh, with the extended barrel and the swift spring. Basically, it's, they're both swift parts. Um, and then I added on the uh, worker angled foregrip. Um, I loaded up one of the mags that came with it with the darts that came with it. These are the Dart Zone Bamboo, I guess, 2.0 darts. They're a little bit different on the head. But uh, pretty much the same. But there's five in here. We'll see what kind of uh, average shots we get with this. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. Let's let's see. Whoa, 317. 293. 316. 298, 312. So it is a it is now a 300 FPS blaster. Um, so yeah, I may dremel out that one bit and put it in just for stability for this really long um, um, barrel. But other than that, pretty simple mod, guys. Um, you just need the parts. Um, just need the do what I put uh, in the video here, and you should be good to go. I'll leave the links down for the um, upgraded internal parts, the internal uh, plunger tube, and the O-rings, and all that stuff from Tinkershot, uh, from its Etsy. I'll put that in the description, as well as the uh, Swift spring and barrel. Um, I think I got those from Out of Darts. So, yeah. Um... Yeah, I think it's really cool now. <laughs> we made a good blaster, much better, and much worth uh, 
uh, $180. So good. Um, I have some exciting news. I don't want to give anything away yet because I want you guys to be in suspense. <laughs> but um, I am... I don't know exactly what day, but it's going to be the day, either the day before or the Thursday before Armageddon. Um, I will have a video up, a special video. Um, I hope it's before Armageddon, but it's going to be a video on a blaster that is not yet released to the public. So I'm psyched. Um, yeah, it's going to be awesome. And then um, I also got, in the next few days, I'm going to be reviewing the... Um, I got two more blasters of the X-Shot Insanity line. I got the Rage Fire, which is that giant chain gun thing. And then the uh, Mad Mega Barrel, which is that one with that really big kind of ring uh, thing. I think it's kind of like a shotgun style, but it looks really cool. And then, of course, you can combine all of them. The only ones I'm missing, I believe, are the Manic. Um, and I know that there's a two-pack on Amazon. I don't want two. I just want one. Um, but we'll see. Maybe I'll get that next week. Um, but other than that, guys, uh, leave a like and a uh, follow in, in the, um, you know, down below. Uh, please comment what you like uh, about this uh, mod. Uh, let me know if you did yours a little different or better. Um, but yeah, other than that, guys, I think I'll see you in the next video, all right? Um, please like, follow, share, subscribe, all that good stuff that YouTube makes you do. And I'll see you guys later, all right?